I have a Mac monitor, a uh, Apple Cinema Display uh, 27 inch that it's dead. And the reason why it's dead is because the power supply uh, basically fried up. But I'm going to show you a quick and dirty way where you can actually get it going with an Amazon AC to DC power adapter. Uh, this one you pick it up for a couple of bucks online. Uh, came in within a day, uh, actually overnight. Uh, as you can see, one of my monitors is dead. The power supply burnt out of it. And I'm going to show you how to hook this up in pretty much a quick and dirty way. But in, actually, in all actuality, it's going to be a little bit better because you can swap this out if you ever have to do, replace it. Unlike the official Apple ones, which are pretty much non-existent. They're, they're pretty much burning out and a lot of people are actually getting rid of these monitors because you can't find a power supply no more for them. But you can still revive it by putting one of these on. Now this is, again, from Amazon and it is a LED style power supply. As you can see, it is 24 volts at 6.25 amps at 150 watts. This is plenty juice for this uh, 27 inch uh, Apple cinema display if you have the 20 inch which is smaller that will also work out sorry the, the uh, autofocus is kind of freaking out here if you have the smaller monitor that'll work just fine too if you have a 30 inch I believe this might just barely be enough to power that 30 inch, that 30 inch uh, monitor but I don't have the proof for that but I'll show you what you have to do uh, to get that monitor working again uh, that way and or, or if you have another monitor that's a uh, some monitor that you don't have to pass by to and you basically just have it sitting in your closet or thinking about trashing it don't these are great monitors still these two monitors I mean back in 06 I mean these are pretty old monitors and they're still working just great so let me show you what you're gonna need to do and what wires you need to find out and uh, we'll give you see what you guys can need to as far as parts go so as I said, this is what you're going to need. You need a power supply, uh, AC DC power supply. Uh, trying to get the focus right, but the focus ain't working right. There it is. And you can get that on Amazon for about 50 bucks, depending if you have uh, Amazon uh, Prime. You can get the free shipping next uh, next day. And uh, this is what you're going to need. What you're also going to need is uh, what's called a weather pack connector. Uh, these are pretty easy to make uh, you can get this one for about another $30 uh, or you can do a quick and dirty way and use your uh, spade connectors that you can get from your auto parts supply auto parts place and they're basically the, the, uh, the spade that's just one end is a female one end is a male and you just plug them together but in my case I'm going to use the weather pack because it's it's more cleaner uh, plus two uh, it actually locks in place so even if you try to attempt to use say the uh, the barrel connector here this one can pop out of place and not only that too uh, the the uh, male end on the other side will have to be you have to solder that and not everybody has a solder and not everybody wants to you know solder stuff so crimp it using a uh, weather pack connector or your ordinary spade connector could also work and I'll show you how what that that looks like here in a second Okay, so these are two types of connectors you can use, but I'm gonna use what's called a weather pack. This is mostly meant for automotive, outdoor kind of connector. Uh, it comes with uh, these uh, yellow waterproof seals that help prevent water from going in, but in our case, we don't really need that because this is gonna be indoors. There's no water to be had here. The This is a little more costly. This one you have to order from, again, you have to order that from Amazon. Uh, again, it's called a weather pack. Uh, they do sell a kit here, like this one here. Uh, it includes the crimpers and, of course, several connectors different, uh, with different pins in it. Uh, this one runs for about, you know, $30, $34. Uh, you can get that within a couple of days. Uh, if you can, if you really don't want this and you're really quick pinch, you can use what's called a regular spade connector. These are individual connectors. Let's see if I can try to do this with one hand. And you have to base. it's just basically a male and a female connected together. And I'm going to have to try to do this Give me one second here. So that's what it is. You got a uh, female here. You have a male here and put them together and it makes a connection. Uh, that you can pick up pretty much at any automotive store. 
uh, they do have different colors. They have a red, which is like the smallest gauge, a blue, which is kind of like the medium gauge, and a yellow, which is the more heavy gauge, which is in other words, the thickness of the actual cable. In this case here, uh, I believe the reds and the blues would just work fine. The yellows would probably be too much, too big, uh, large of a diameter to work uh, to crimp it correctly. Uh, but again, we're going to use what's called the weather pack because again, this is just more uh, more convenient. You could just unplug it with both wires at the same time, and it actually makes it look the installation look a little more cleaner and more professional. Uh, one thing to note, as you can probably tell, this is going to pretty much we're pretty much cutting the wire uh, cutting uh, from the actual monitor itself. So if you're trying to preserve the original connector, uh, it's it's a toss up if you want to save it or just cut it off because if you cut it off you can always go with a, a yeah, aftermarket power supply like this one I got here from Amazon and you can just if ever this one if these ever die you can always just replace it with another one um, a lot of you might be saying well why don't you just use the barrel connector like I, I said before well the problem with the barrel connector is not everybody has a soldering iron uh, you will have to basically find the um, the opposite end of this barrel connector and then you have to solder the leads going into that barrel connector and again not everybody has that kind of uh, uh, station but you, it's easy to get crimpers for it if you're really on the budget you always can get crimpers on this again they usually sell these in kits at the auto parts store you can get that get away with that uh, but if you want something more professional look and go with a, what's called a weather pack uh, i do have the crimpers for that uh, i do also have the crimpers for the uh regular spade connectors of course a good cutter and strippers to strip the insulation on the off the wiring is also good and that's pretty much all you need you only need no soldering to be done if you try to reuse the, the barrel jack here um, so let's uh, I guess the main point is which wires are which so I actually dissected an old Apple power supply off an Apple monitor and this is the actual connector that's inside of it as you can see, there's only two main wires going into it. Uh, it does have a resistor. Let me see if I can zoom in real quick. There we go. So there's only two main wires going into it. And I'll let you know here in a second which one's going to be power, which one's ground. As you can see, uh, you probably may be able to see it here already, but this is the actual main connector. And it's just positive and negative going into it. There's nothing else. Uh, it might be a drop down resistor here to drop it down to five volts for the five volt rail but i will tell you this you don't need the five volt five volt five volt bleh, excuse me you won't need the five volt rail because the usb is coming off the connector off the um, split harness off the back provides the five volts for the usb so you don't technically need that i've had as long as it's like a low power USB, like a keyboard, a USB thumb drive, that's fine. But if you try to power up, let's say like a hard drive, that ain't gonna work, unfortunately. But just small little accessories will work just fine. Uh, same thing for the uh, Firewire. So let's get started here. Let me show you what wires you need to go into. As you can see, these are two wires going into the old connector that's on the power supply for the uh, Apple Mac Apple display. And we'll show you here what's positive and what's negative. All right, so once you make the sacrifice of cutting off the end of the uh, power connector off your Apple display, you're going to find three wires. You're going to find a red and a black and a gray wire. Uh, I think there's also another white wire, I believe, in there, but I, I don't remember. But uh, obviously, red is positive, black is negative. The gray wire is for the 5 volt, but again, you don't need that. The USB will self-power itself. Uh, once you hook up the uh, USB uh, to your hub and it'll get the 5 volts from there so you technically don't need this 5 volt uh, gray wire you can just cut it off or just put it aside and make sure it doesn't short out with the, uh, the shielding there uh, other than that we'll get started here as far as uh, stripping these out and crimping them alright so we got it all peeled back a little bit further uh, I also added a heat shrink here. I'm going to put the heat shrink on there once I put the connector on there. That way I can cover it up and be all nice and pretty. Uh, of course, uh, now it's time to cut into the actual bear connector on this side of the power supply. Now, in my case, I'm going to cut mine a little short. I'm going to probably cut it to about right here. And uh, probably cut it right here and then hook up, put the connector there. Uh, you could just use the entire thing and just cut off this here. but thing is I don't want to have all this cable 
uh, dangling in the back of the the, the, P, the desk here. So I'm gonna cut mine a little short, hook, put the connector here, spli uh, splice this, and get the wire shaded up here. Um, technically, it wasn't a uh, white wire, it was a white, uh, basically like a white, a, uh, I guess rope that's inside there. It's just for, I guess, strength to keep the, the cable from twisting and that kind of stuff. But really, again, it's just three wires. You got your positive, your negative, and your five volt. I believe this five volt is most, mostly for sensing uh, for the power supply, the original Apple's power supply. Uh, but you don't wanna cut this flush to here because there's a, uh, I guess, ground sh uh, shielding here on the cable, on this uh, wire itself. So you don't want to cut it flush there because you might short it out. So just uh, leave it out and then when we put the heat shrink on there or tape, however you want to do it, you just fold it under like that and the heat shrink will protect it from ever touching any kind of uh, source. Uh, so let's go ahead and start cutting this up. Uh, like I said, I'm going to cut mine a little short, but you can cut it to whatever length you want. You can cut it off here or you can cut it off over here closer. Uh, just for my case, I'm going to cut it a little closer here. That way there's not so much wire coming up because you still have the uh, actual power going to the wall uh, back over here. So it's just going to make things so much bigger, so much longer and stuff. And I really don't want that. So uh, let's go ahead and take care of this and uh, we'll get it going. So just a quick tip. Um, if you want to preserve the original connector that goes to this, you could just simply just kind of, uh, splice this here and dissect your uh, old uh, broken power supply and pull the this thing out and splice this here, which I've done this in the past, actually, you can tell I have heat shrink there, but I, I've done that in the past where uh, I did that here and you just plug in the original plug that went here to there and you could preserve the actual uh, factory connector. Uh, again, on this particular model here, uh, like I said, this one was uh, red positive, black negative. You just have to find out which one's this one. Uh, if I remember correctly, the blue is negative and the uh, brown is hot. Uh, but that's that's if you want to preserve the original character here. But in this case, I'm not because chances of finding a, a good working power supply for an Apple monitor is pretty much next to nil. And if they are, you do find one, they're pretty expensive. Uh, and they're not mass producing this anymore because Apple, I believe they have proprietary components in it. So this is really your only option if you want to continue using your Apple Center display is you're gonna have to uh, put a new connector on it and basically hook it up to a new power supply that supplies 24 volts. All right, so I got this spliced up. Uh, white is hot and this one in particular has uses ground as shielding uh, but that is your negative right here so it's negative and positive uh, pretty self-explanatory uh, I also made sure I got 24 volts come out of this before I splice into it because in case there's a problem with the power supply you can return and get an exchange on it but this particular one uh, I make sure I got 24 volts coming out of there so I do again this is positive this is negative and of course you want to match that toward the positive negative of this cable and you'd be good to, that's pretty much it good to go there and let's go ahead and get these uh, connectors made up okay so we got this one set up we have the uh with uh waterproof style uh silicone grommets here uh you technically don't need to put these on but i'll put them put it on my sake but then it's easier just to keep the water out but again, this is that's mostly meant for outside uh, outdoor use for automobile automobiles. But in our case, we're using this for indoors. But again, it's the same purpose. You're just making a connector. And this one here, we're going to use on this end what's called the female male pin connector, which means this is the female connector itself, but it uses male pins on the inside and of course on the uh, on the male side, it uses female. Uh, pin so that's pretty much that's gonna go on this end over here but we're gonna get started on this uh, make sure you put some heat shrink on in this particular model at least put some heat shrink on there because this ground wire is gonna be exposed that way you can sleeve it up and put the heat shrink on there and heat it up and that way it, it keeps everything nice and sealed uh, preferably you want to use the which I don't have but you want to use the one that's, that has a uh, kind of a glue inside the heat shrink this one's not that type uh, this is just a regular heat shrink 
no, uh, no internal adhesive. Uh, but if you want to use it, uh, it's probably best to use the internal adhesive style. But that's going. It's not so hard to put this on. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put this right here, and if you can see, you got a lot of excess from here out. So you want to trim it just where you have enough that goes over that that uh, crimp there. And then lastly, you're gonna hit crimp it with the uh, end in the back for the actual weather uh, weather seal there. Uh, but again, if you're not using the weather seal, you don't have to do that. Uh, but you do have to kind of crimp it a little bit so that way it actually fits in the connector uh, connector hole back over here. That way uh, it can slide in and click and, and lock in place. So here it is kind of uh, trimmed off. Uh, best tool to use on that is some uh, flush cuts, but you can use any kind of wire cutters uh, to do that. But flush cuts are a really good tool to have. Uh, especially if you're doing zip ties, if you use the flush cuts to cut the zip ties, it leaves the surface really nice and smooth instead of like a gouge edge. If you use like a regular wire uh, cutter, uh, it will leave like a real sharp edge on those uh, zip ties. Uh, but flush cuts will make that uh, make easy work on that, making sure you don't cut yourself uh, on those wire ties. But uh, again, that's what I used to cut the X's off, and I'm gonna go and crimp it and show you how the crimp looks like. All right, so this is the crimp made. I used uh, a tool that I got with one of these uh, weather, weather pack tools. Uh, does the job. Uh, the other one that you saw on Amazon does a lot better uh, job because it's uh, a ratcheting style, but this was more of a manual style. So uh, that's pretty much it. That's how you crimp that stuff in. You uh, take a quick look. Uh, again, there's other videos on YouTube that show you how to crimp it. I just, right now I'm single-handed right now because I'm holding the camera with my other hand so I can't do it with both hands to show you and I don't have anybody here to help me out with. But step by step, that's pretty much it. Uh, you line this one up to the same depth, cut the excess off, put the other crimp and then you just, we'll show you how to just plug it into the actual connector and go from there. All right, so we got the second one crimped on already. You can see they're pretty much equal lengths. Uh, that way they plug in the connector uh, they won't be kind of, you know, one forward and the other. They're both going at the same time. Uh, this crimp came out a lot better than this one. This one kind of, at least this one came out kind of bad, but the uh, the main one is the actual uh, copper wire going to the actual connector. But let's go ahead and put these on. And uh, it's not that hard to crimp. You will have to kind of orientate it a little bit. So if it doesn't go in one way, you just turn it around and put it the other way. Now on these connectors, you do have an A and a B. Let's see if I can find it where it's at. Give me one second here. Should be labeled. Here it is, one and two. So this one has a one and a two. So let's see here, I'm trying to get the light there. See one and two. So uh, in order to orientate these, uh, the best way is you use number one for positive and number two for negative. The same thing will be on your other end. There'll be a one and a two. See, and get in the light shadow there is one and two so you do the same thing on this one here you put your positive on one and put your negative on two and then when you that's way when you connect it they're they're pretty much not gonna be crossed so let's go ahead and snap this connector in all right so we got the connector in the actual plug itself uh one will make sure that they're both showing uh let's see i try to get the light in here there it is make sure both pins are equally inside if we see one that's further in or uh, not further in, I should say, but you know, not plug in all the way. Uh, you want to make sure you push it as much as you can. And this particular one, again, this this one is acting kind of like a uh, ground shielding plus negative uh, power. So uh, other cables may have the two wires themselves, kind of like this one has the two wires in the vision and the shielding around it. Those are a little more easy to do. Another thing too, uh, word of advice, try to put both wires in at the same time. Don't put one in and then put the other one in because then you might have an issue trying to get the other wire in there uh, and then you have to, may have to twist the wire, not twist the wire, but uh, rotate the wire so that way the, uh, the clip can lock in place in here. And in this particular model, let's see if we can try to see it here. You see that red piece of plastic in there? That is a locking mechanism. So when you get a screwdriver or something thin enough, you push that down and it locks the wires in place so it does not come out or pull out. Uh, that's a really neat feature with these uh, with these uh, weather packs that they have that little locking clip inside of it so that way they don't pull out when you actually disconnect it or whatnot. So they have that red clip. So when you see that red uh, thing in there, push it down, you should hear a little click 
and then that, that'll let you know that it's set in place. Now, if it doesn't click, if you try pushing it out, it doesn't click, then you may not have the wire all the way in, or two, the wire may be in, installed uh, upside down, so you may have to pull that wire out, rotate it, and put it back in, because there is a one-way, uh, one way those connectors, those uh, pins go in there because there is a lock, little locking tab, uh, not on this, but this has a, like a little recess to it. And on the actual connector itself, there's a little uh, locking tab that locks uh, locks into that uh, to that uh, recess on that pin. So if you try to put it one way, it doesn't lock in together. You have to rotate the pin and then push it back in, and then it should lock into that locking tab and the little recess together. All right, so we got the uh, heat shrink on there. Uh, looks nice and professional, looks really nice. Uh, in my case, again, uh, that bare wire was kind of a nuisance uh, uh, having it exposed, but you know, either you have it exposed or not, uh, you wanna put some heat shrink on there just so it can look nice and professional. Uh, that's why I like these weather packs. They make it look really good uh, going in. So let's go ahead and start working on the uh, display connector now. All right, so we're working on the display connector now. Uh, as far as the depth of the wire on this particular one, it doesn't really matter much. Well, you wanna make sure it just goes right there, uh, right over those two tabs. Uh, as far as installation goes uh, of the wire itself, you just wanna just peek it out just a little bit from the uh, insulation, rubber insulation here. Then, uh, that way it's all nice and uh, even when you connect both, connect, uh, make both crimps on these uh, two pins. All right, so that's the first crimp there. And you see the uh, black insulation is barely peeking out of the uh, rubber uh, weather pack uh, sleeve here. So let's go ahead and crimp that one. All right, so the uh, weather sleeve is put up uh, crimped, but if you see it like this, where it's kind of uh, pointing up, make sure you get the crimper, hold it in place and bend it down just slightly. You want this pin to be straight because it's, it's kind of, if it has a little bendy like that, Unfortunately, it's not gonna re uh, get the focus here. Focus, focus, there it is. You see that little recess on top? It's not gonna snap in place uh, with it being like this. You wanna make sure this connector is straight. That also goes for the uh, pins on the uh, on the opposite end. You wanna make sure that pin is as straight as it can be. Uh, again, you just hold it with the crimper in place and just slightly bend it with your finger. Uh, it doesn't take much force to bend these uh, back straight. So just be careful with it because you don't wanna bend it too much and uh, end up, you know, uh, breaking it off, which it can happen, but it very rarely does, if you re unless you really put, use some really excessive force. All right, so we got both pins made. As you see, they're pretty much equal here. Uh, another thing too, make sure you put your heat slave on there, or heat shrink, I'm sorry, before you <laughs> crimp these down, because once you uh, crimp these down, it make, it's kind of a pain in the butt to put the sleeve, uh, the heat shrink on there. As far as the ray wire, you just want to pull it back just a tad snip it right here at the end and with the heat shrink uh, cover it up and that way uh, the five volts uh, that's either I, I, again I think there is five volts going from the monitor to this wire for the uh, power supply I don't think there's five volts coming from the power supply but that's just my assumption uh, but either way uh, you don't want it to short out on anything so just snip it right here in the end put the heat shrink over it make sure the uh, the gray wire is over the uh, insulation here, so that way it doesn't short out on the uh, ground wire there, uh, grounding wire or uh, what you call it, the uh, whatever braided wire that's in there. All right, so we got this all hooked up. Uh, we cut off the axis here. You can actually kind of see with the silhouette of the uh, heat shrink that uh, gray wire in there. So uh, this one also has a red. Uh, uh, lock pin which is this one right here I took it off uh, but it goes right in there it snaps in place uh, let's see if I can try to do it with one hand uh, no give me one second hold on all right so I put it on there temper uh, the way it comes from the from the actual box uh, box comes in um, like this uh, this is a three uh, three pin but the concepts the same it's got this locking uh, mechanism here that which locks the pins in place so all you do is just push it down, it snaps in place. If it snaps in place like that, that means the pins are in there really good and they'll never come off. So let's go ahead and power this thing up. I'll show you a demonstration. When I hook this up, the monitor should come on and we'll go. And that pretty much solves that problem. If you ever have issues with the uh, power supplies dying on these uh, Apple cinema, cinema displays, uh, this is a really good fix uh, to get it going. You don't need no expensive 
other power supply. Uh, this one's uh, set again for 24 volts at uh, 6.25 amps at 150 watts. So this is plenty of power for this 27 inch. All right, so the moment of truth here, we have the power supply hooked up. Uh, we have the computer running right now. This was not hooked, this has got no power to it. This one's got power. Um, let's see, I can try to do this one-hander and hook it up. Of course, it's got the uh, a clip here that holds it in place. Let's see, I can try to do it with one hand. And everything should work once you plug it in. And there it goes. I didn't have to power it on. It was ready to power it on. So there it goes. That's how you can uh, get your power supply working on your Apple Cinema Display. Fairly simple. I mean, if you go with uh, your automotive store, get yourself some cheap crimpers and some uh, some of these uh, spade connectors, you can easily do it. Um, you can get both the, uh, the blue or the red connectors. You probably need a combination of both. The spade connector is essentially the same. It's just the, uh, the gauge of the wire. Uh, the gauge on the wire coming from the uh, Apple Cinema Display is a much thinner gauge versus this, ga this gauge. This gauge is pretty thick, so you probably want to use either the, probably use the blue wire for that. If you don't want to s cut the end of your Apple Cinema Display, you can sacrifice your old power, broken power supply, take off the actual connector to that power supply. Uh, of course, the power supply is glued together, so there's no screws to that power supply. You have to basically destroy it uh, in order to get this mechanism out and of course the blue wire is ground which it will tell you ground and then the brown wire will be voltage which will say VO on this end here if I can get video they say VO so voltage so that'll be your positive and negative uh, if you want to try to uh, reuse the same connector off the Apple Center display but again when are you going to find another Apple uh, power supply and working condition. If you're gonna find one, it's probably used. It's probably already got its lifespan uh, used up. It's gonna probably go out. So your real best bet is just buy yourself an Amazon power supply. Uh, this is pretty heft. Again, uh, links are in the description. I'll put that site on the uh, on the description. Uh, the weather pack as well. Uh, the weather packs you can get with the crimper. Mine came with a really cheap crimper. Uh, others come with a ratcheting crimper that works just the same or if you don't want to go with the weather pack you can again go with the spade connectors be a lot cheaper much faster but I mean look at this it looks really nice I mean it too bad it wasn't white <laughs> but yeah you just hook up your firewire your USB you get your power from both those ports into your USB and uh, firewire port on the back of the monitor uh, again that 5 volt gray wire coming out of that I believe that's more of a sense wire uh, to let the power supply know it's got you know it's, it's asking for power uh so but again in my in my thing you don't need it uh you get the 5 volt, volt, uh, volts from the both the uh firewire and the usb so there you have it that's how you uh, get your apple cinema display working again for another couple of more years and again these monitors are great monitors and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them it's just these power supplies are, are getting harder to come by the original ones and so these are a good uh, option to do. And again, these last for another couple of more years before you have to replace it again. Uh, I mean, obviously they're Amazon China power supplies, but you know, at least you have an option uh, to get these monitors going back again. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And thank you guys for watching.